Pasto sits at the base of the Hilaris Volcano in a valley high in the Andes Mountains. At over 8,000 feet, the city is cool and damp, and is often blanketed by clouds. Pasto serves as the hub for Southern Colombia, and is known for its impressive variety of craft traditions. The city feels like a refuge, where people can come to work or flee violence in other parts of Southern Colombia. Hilberto Granja learned the art of Barniz as a young apprentice. He trained for three years, learning to do a single pattern inspired by the ruins of San Augustine in the nearby mountains. Now he is a master craftsman and runs his own home workshop together with his son Oscar. From the day Hilberto began learning his first traditional style, he has been dedicated to the crafting of Barniz de Pasto. He's been at it for 57 years. Esto fue lo primero que aprendí. Sí. Estos dibujos. Primero aprender a recortar. Mm -hmm. Y después a hacer otras composiciones de esto. Claro, ya lo tenemos en la mente. Eh, por ejemplo, estas. ¿no? Las rosas eh, también, digamos, poco a poco uno va modernizando porque en un principio le sale mal entonces llevar el ritmo cortar parejito y luego a levanta entonces ya queda digamos aquí el dibujo recortado The process of making barniz de pasto begins on the far side of the Andes on the edge of the Amazon basin twice a year in May and November harvesters venture out into the jungles of Putumayo to collect leaf buds from the Mopa Mopa tree. When the harvest is finished, the Barnizadors journey across the perilous Trampoline de la Muerte to Makoa to buy enough supply for the next six months. Back in the workshop, the artisan breaks off a chunk of leaf buds to use, dunking them in hot water to soften the resin. The resin is first cleaned and dyed by hand. Then, after reheating, it's stretched to form a sheet. Once the sheets are ready, the artisan must select a form. At the heart of each piece is a wood carving. These come from the local woodworkers and can be anything from bowls to chests to sculptures. To decorate these, the Barnizador carefully cuts out patterns from his sheets of mopa mopa and arranges them on the wood, pressing them down to hold them. The design only exists in the mind of the artist. It is not sketched out ahead of time, though complex scenes must be planned out carefully. After days of work, when the designs are finished, they must be fixed into place. To do this, the Barnizador heats a piece to soften the Mopa Mopa and presses on it so it clings tightly to the wood. Después, ya que está terminado, ya se le echa, se le aplica una película de laca mate o brillante o mista. Mm -hmm. Puede ser con un trapo o con un pincel o con el compresor. Es el toque final ya. The origins of Barniz stretch back long before the city of Pasto was founded. The Inca were using it to decorate their ceremonial cups called queros at least 250 years before Columbus arrived. By that point, their empire stretched right up against the future site of Pasto and the steep mountain jungles of the Macoa Valley. The Barniz tradition came to Pasto from the Macoa Valley, where the resin is still collected today. By 1676, the trade was already thriving in Pasto, and craftsmen struggled to meet the growing demand from Europe. Early pieces copied the intricate patterns of illuminated manuscripts, while later designs grew cleaner and simpler, often featuring local flowers and animals. Today, the craft is in danger of dying out. There are only 10 resin harvesters, 9 wood masters, and 36 varnish masters left. The next generation is drawn to better paying, more stable jobs, while deforestation is threatening the Mopa Mopa tree the Barneys comes from. This storied tradition, passed down from generation to generation, is in danger of dying out. In 2020, UNESCO placed Barneys de Pasto on its list of critically endangered cultural heritage, but this has done little to help the struggling craft. I work with artisans like Gilberto and Oscar Granja to bring their work to the U.S. so they can continue making the crafts that are important to them 
and their communities, and to provide opportunities for the next generation to do the same. You can find Hilberto's and other artisans' work at lostcanyonimports.com.